Hello. I know it's been 283 days and 9 hours since I've last posted a video. And uh, sorry for disappearing. I can't believe it took me almost a year to start writing again. I don't even know if anyone is still watching this channel. But it was fun writing again and I'll try to post more often from now on. I was too shy to voice this over after so long but maybe I'll do voiceovers again in the future. Well that's it for now. Let's start with the actual video. Okay I need you to help me. I want to write again. But I just don't know how to start. Can you just give me a sentence I can use as a starter for my story? Oh did you finally get over your writer's block? Absolutely not. But I came to the conclusion that not writing doesn't help either. So I might as well, you know, try to complete one whole sentence without getting a mental breakdown and banging my head against the table in frustration. I don't quite know what to say but I'm proud of you for not giving in to your intrusive, self-destructive thoughts. Yeah well, at least I'm trying to not do that. Aha, uh -huh. so you said you want me to help you pick a starter sentence for your story? That's it? You just want me to say a random sentence? And you're going to use that sentence first thing in your story? That would indeed be very awesome of you. I don't think I should be doing that. Why n? You know there's nothing good going to come out of my mouth. What if the sentence I pick is something like, MHH let me think. Ah, there is a green pig flying across the river. Don't trust me with making good decisions. You're the writer, and I'm sure you have a few good ideas despite your writer's block. Marky, look. Recently I went through the notes that I took over the past year. You know, every time I thought I got a good idea for a nice little story, I would write it down. Do you know what I managed to write over the past year? I made sure to emphasize the word year, because this writer's block of mine had reached a point where it was simply hysterical. I've no clue, but feel free to show me your work and I shall evaluate it. I pull my phone out, open the notes app and shove it into Mackie's face. Here, read it out loud. Um, sure. Cheers. Kuro laughs. Mackie is dead silent for a moment before he tilts his head to look at me. That's it? Yes. Well, um, so what's the story behind this fleeting idea of yours? No idea, but I guess someone was drinking with a guy named Kuro. And that Kuru dude laughed for whatever reason. I've the feeling I wanted to write something romantic but I don't remember what went through my head back then. There's another great story that I started working on 200 days ago. Here, read. Hanamaki clears his throat before reading out loud that one sentence I had managed to put together. There he stands. Who? And where does he stand? Why? Why does he just stand there? What does he want? Look I don't know. That's why I've never finished writing more than this one. Singular sentence. Mackie, I'm a mess. I need help. And if I write about green, flying pigs then so be it. Hell, let's make them shit rainbows. Mackie snorts as he hands my phone back to me. Alright how about we try to figure out the general direction your story is going to go first. And then we try to tackle the plot. Sounds good to me. So, uh, let's see. Any idea what kind of emotions you want your readers to feel? Do you want to write wholesome romance? Horror? Or maybe satire? MHH I don't know. I want my readers to get that warm, happy feeling of excitement in their stomachs when I write about their favorite couple. But then I also really just want to kill everyone off and make my readers cry and suffer as much as I possibly can. Well that escalated quickly. I didn't know you were that sadistic. There's a lot of things I don't even yet know about myself, Mackie. Very philosophical. Anyways write it down. Write down what? The thing about making those pig shit unicorns. Rainbows. Mackie they're shitting rainbows. Write my bad. My phone rings. Sorry give me a second. Mackie nods and I proceed to pick up my phone. How's your writing going? Do we not greet another properly anymore? I've been wanting to read your bestseller for a while now. When's it going to finally publish? May I pick up a copy in person in about MH? Actually right now sounds good to me. Are you free? I'll hang up. No don't. I'm sorry. Anyway where are you? Who are you? My dad. I would prefer daddy over dad. You good with that? What the fuck? 
Iwezumi's more than slightly grossed out voice in the background makes me chuckle. I'm at a cafe with Maki. Why were you asking that? Maki? Perfect. I've always wanted to meet the guy you've been hanging out with ever after leaving us all behind. You know, Okura cries about wanting to see you on an everyday basis. Send me your location, okay? Wait what? Madsen? Matsukawa had already hung up. My strawberry blonde friend glances at me curiously. I think Madsen is in town. Madsen? Your childhood friend? Yeah, Iwezumi too. At least I heard him in the background. I don't know what's going on, but Madsen told me to send him my location. Well that's great. I've always wanted to meet that Madsen dude. You always talk about him. He said the same thing. I think the two of you will get along great. Maybe a bit too great. In fact, I believe you two as a duo, will be quite annoying. Maybe I should just go home. Well now you're just being plain rude. You didn't do anything inappropriate to our lovely Yen Chan, right? Okura crosses his arms in front of his chest as he interrogates Hanamaki. He thinks it makes him look intimidating, but to me he just looks like an angry hamster. He's so cute. You're like an angry parent. Not now, Iwezumi. Go look at the menu and let me do the talking for now, okay? Iwezumi rolls his eyes but does as told, grabbing the menu from across the table before reading through it. Just what do you think of me? He's as straight as a circle, so you don't have to worry about that, Toru. Hey do you have to blurt out my preferences like that? I didn't even come out to my mum yet and you're going around announcing it to strangers? Maki, they're just as gay as you. Iwa-chan claimed Carver, but those two aside, Matson is still single. Maybe you can finally find your true love today. Maki you can't afford to waste such opportunity. I thought I was your daddy. What? What? That aside, I haven't claimed him. I've chosen to tolerate him. Excuse me. It was you who confessed my dear Iwa-chan. Oh really? Iwezumi decides to stare at the menu again, clearly flustered. Ikora puffs his cheeks before smacking his boyfriend against the head. What the hell? Oh I thought maybe it'll help you remember certain events. Ikora raises his nose and waves at a nearby waitress. I lean closer to Maki and lower my voice. Only Matsukawa and Hanamaki can hear me now. They're so cute aren't they? Absolutely. They're disgustingly lovely dovey. I want that kind of relationship. They're annoying as hell. Trust me you don't want to put up with it on a daily basis. Matsukawa sips on his cup of coffee and tries to stare there, still arguing. Couple into oblivion. Lol he's so jealous. You know Maki, I've been thinking I found you the perfect partner. You've said the same about the last three people that you've tried to set me up with, YN. Yeah but this time I'm sure of it. I can see you looking at Madsen all this time, you know? I know he is your type and you two already started to share one brain cell, so why don't give it a try and go for a date? Just the two of you? He's never been to this city, so make sure you show him around all the romantic places. Maki chokes on his own spit, resulting in a violent cough. Matsukawa spits his coffee out and just stares at me in total shock. Ikora and Iwezumi finally put their lover's quarrel on hold and shift their attention to us. You two okay? Iwezumi raises his eyebrow. Yeah. Matsukawa clears his throat. I was just saying I think these two would make a great couple. What do you think, Toru? Oh. Yes. Yes yes yes. I was thinking the same thing as soon as they've exchanged the first three sentences with another. And we've hardly exchanged another three sentences since. So what makes you think that we should start dating? Women's intuition. Trust me I'm never wrong with that sort of stuff. Oh my god. Matsukawa rolled his eyes and Hanmaki looks like he wants to disappear into the ground. You're just making things difficult for them now. Difficult and embarrassing. You know exactly that Matson doesn't have the word embarrassment in his vocabulary and neither does Maki. Oh my god why and stop shipping real people. All right all right. MHH well looked him in the eyes for 10 consecutive seconds then. If you manage to do that without turning red, I'll stop. Why and enough now? You're like an angry parent now, Iwa-chan. Matsukawa sighs. 
You'll drop this whole thing. Promise? Promise. The black-haired young man just shakes his head as he slides off his chair. He walks over to where Hanamaki is sitting. Wait a second YN that's just stupid. Come on you don't have to listen to her. Matsukawa leans forward. His hand is in the other boy's hair, forcing him to make eye contact. And he's as red as a tomato. So challenge failed. See, I was right after all. Iwazumi rolls his eyes. Give that poor man a break already. Matsukawa lets go of your friend. He looks like he is clearly amused by his reaction. Not true. I just forgot to breathe that's why I turned red okay. Oh so I'm quite literally breathtaking? No you're not. The strawberry blonde's voice raises about two octaves higher. Matsukawa just smirks. You know, maybe Inn's intuition isn't wrong after all.